Uh, probably the most essential jig I have in my shop is a good crosscut sled for the table saw. It's really going to open up a lot more options for you with the table saw and is a whole lot more accurate than that crappy miter gauge that the manufacturer puts in with the saw. The fence on the crosscut sled allows you to make perfectly square cuts. And with a stop block, you can quickly make multiple parts at the exact same length. Now my old crosscut sled is one that I picked up at a yard sale a few years ago. This one has a few flaws that I'd like to address. First of all, it's way too big and heavy. I've actually never used the full capacity of this thing, so I'm looking to make something much smaller that will fit what I do day to day. Second, the melamine top is very slippery. The wood just wants to slide around too much on the melamine, and that can cause me to make an inaccurate cut, but it can also be a hazard if the wood is to slide into the blade while I'm moving the sled around. And third, this spider sled has a built-in stop block on the fence, which is pretty handy actually, but there's way too much flex in the stop block. If I push too hard up against it, it actually moves and that gives me an inaccurate result. So the new crosscut sled that I'm going to build is going to resolve all of these problems and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it so you can build one for yourself. So I start with a 3 quarter inch sheet of plywood and I cut it down to 36 by 24 inches for the base of my sled. I also need to cut some thinner strips and these are going to be for the front and back fence. So we've got all of our pieces cut out. It's time to glue up the parts for our fences. Now I've got three pieces that I'm going to use for the front fence that'll sit closest to me on the table saw, and I'm going to use two pieces for the rear fence. Now plywood has a tendency to bow, and these pieces certainly did. We're going to take a couple of steps to make sure that we eliminate that bow so that we have a perfectly straight and true fence. Now one thing you can do, if I take these two pieces and I have them going the same direction, the bow is curving off this way. If I take one piece and flip it around, so now the bow is opposing itself. When you clamp this together, it's going to eliminate the majority of that bow in the wood. And the other thing I'm going to do is make sure that I clamp these to a known flat surface while the glue dries. And you can use a, a level or a long straight edge for that, but I'm actually going to use the front rail of my table saw. Now this is solid steel and it's dead flat. So I know this is going to give me the best chance of having a perfectly straight and true fence. You want to make sure you're using plenty of glue for these glue ups. You want to make sure that every inch gets covered. So go ahead and get them good and goopy. Then use a roller or a spreader to make sure you get good even coverage all over the entire surface. Once I have the glue on all of my parts, I'll sandwich them together and clamp them to my table saw rail to make sure they stay perfectly flat. And as soon as you think you have enough clamps, go ahead and throw a couple more on. After the glue is dried, I'll run one edge over the joiner to make sure that the fences are perfectly square. And then I'll clean up the other side over at the table saw. Now over at the miter saw, I'll trim the ends flush. And at the router table, I'll use a 1 8 inch round over bit to round over all of the sharp edges on the tops and the ends of each fence. I'll use my block plane to make a small chamfer on the inside edge of the front fence. This is absolutely essential so that the dust doesn't interfere whenever you're registering a piece of wood off of the fence. Without this chamfer, as you can see, the dust can get wedged between the block of wood and the fence, which can prevent you from getting a square cut. But with the chamfer in place, the dust has somewhere to go, ensuring that you get a perfectly square and accurate cut. I need to install a piece of T-Track in my fence so that I can use my stop block. So I'll use the T-Track to set the height of my router bit so that I can cut a groove into the fence. This T-Track is aluminum, so it's pretty soft. I can easily cut through it with a hacksaw to trim the ends. Then I'll round over the sharp corners with my oscillating sander.
All right, so next we need to install the miter bars on our sled. Now the miter bars fit on the bottom of the sled and ride in the miter slots on the table saw. And these keep the sled perfectly aligned with the blades so we can make square cuts. You can make your miter bars out of hardwood and that's typically what I've done in the past for my sleds. However, this time I wanna try something different. I picked up some aluminum miter bars from my local Rockler and these have several advantages over using hardwood. The first advantage is something you're gonna see if you have a lot of humidity changes in your shop and that is wood movement. So with hardwood miter bars, whenever you have high humidity in your shop, that wood is going to absorb the moisture and cause the wood to expand. That's going to make the miter bars very tight in the miter slots and make it difficult to push the sled through the blade. However, when the humidity drops in your shop, that wood is going to lose that moisture and the wood will shrink. This can make the miter bars too loose in the miter slots and your sled can become unstable on the saw and shift back and forth, causing inaccuracies with your cut. This is resolved with the aluminum miter bars since they're not going to change with changes in humidity. So another benefit of the aluminum miter bars over the wooden ones is these are reusable. So when this sled eventually does wear out and I need to replace it, I can build another sled but pop these off and reuse them on the new sled. So I noticed that the screws I'm using to mount the miter bars don't sit flush. But this is a really simple fix, just using the chamfer bit on my drill. I'll make a larger chamfer so that the screws sit down flush and won't snag on the top of my table saw. Alright, now we can install the miter bars. I'll lay a few pennies inside the miter slots so that this raises the miter bars above the top of the table so they don't sit below it. Then I'll put some CA glue on the miter bars. This will temporarily bind them to the bottom of the sled until I can get it flipped over and get some screws put in. Now I'll set the base down on the miter bars and I'll use the table saw fence to keep the sled square and in the proper position. Then I'll just add some weight and give the glue a few minutes to set up. So just a couple minutes later I'll come back and flip the sled over and drive in some screws. Now we can attach our rear fence. This fence isn't used to register the material against, so it doesn't have to be perfectly square. I'm using just glue to attach this fence. I'm not going to have any screws in it. I'll just try to get it even with the back of the sled. Once I have it where I want it, I'll just use some weight to hold it there until the glue dries. Now the front fence is the one that's critical, so I'll use a square to try to get it as close as possible and then I'll clamp it in place. Now I'll pre-drill and countersink one screw into each end to hold the fence in place. Right now don't put any more than these two screws in. We still need to be able to adjust the fence until we can get it perfectly aligned. And now you can raise the blade on your table saw and cut through the base of the sled. Now with our fence installed, it's time to check the accuracy of our crosscut sled. And to do this, I'm going to be using the William Ng five cut method. Now I won't bore you with all the details and the math that goes into this method and how it works, but I'll just walk you through it one time and show you my final results. To do the five cut method, I need a square piece of plywood that will sit within the sled. I mark a number one on the side that's closest to the blade and make a small cut just taking off the edge of the plywood. Now rotate the plywood so that that edge is against the fence. Mark the next edge with the number two and make another cut. Continue doing this until you've done all four sides going the same direction all the way around. After you've done the fourth side, flip it back around so that the one is facing the saw blade again. Now mark an A in the top corner and a B in the bottom corner and cut this strip off that contains the A and the B. This is the piece that you will use to take your measurements so that you can calculate the error in your fence. Alright, so now that we've done our five cuts and we have our cutoff piece, we need to take some measurements and do some really simple math. So if I measure this A side, the width of this is 0.682 and if I measure this B side, I'm getting 
0.66. So I need to take A, 0.682, subtract B, 0.682 minus 0.66. All right, divide that by four for the number of sides on the piece that we used. So divide by divide by four, and then divide that number by the length of our cutoff, which is 14 inches. So divide 14 equals, now this is our error per inch. So we don't want to take that number, and now we need the distance from the screw that we used to put in our fence on the right side all the way to the end of the fence. For me, that is a 34 inches. So we take our error per inch and multiply it times 34 equals 0 0.013. So that is 13 thousandths of an inch. Now that is how much this fence needs to move to be perfectly square with the blade. All right, so now we know our fence needs to move 13 thousandths of an inch to be perfectly in line with our blade, but which direction? So this, this side of the fence is gonna stay fixed. We're gonna leave the screw here and pivot off of this point. So that means we're gonna remove the screw on the left side of the fence so that the fence can pivot back and forth like this, okay? Now, we used our piece on the left side of the blade and our A is wider than B. So if imagine if we pivot the fence in this direction, pivot forward, then that's gonna cause this piece to turn this direction. So that's making A wider than B. Well, A is already too wide. So that means we need to pivot the fence in the other direction to make A a little bit narrower. So we know the fence is gonna come back 13 thousandths of an inch. Well, how do we get just 13 thousandths of an inch. So we do this by taking a block of wood and clamping it to the sled so that it's just touching the end of the fence. Now we'll remove the screw from the left side of the fence only. And once that screw is out, make sure you, that you mark the hole so that we don't ever reuse this hole. If you do, it's gonna pull the sled back out of alignment. And now that the fence is free to move, I'll use my feeler gauges in the 13 thousandths gauge and set it between the fence and the block. Holding pressure against the feeler gauge in the block, I'll now drill a new pilot hole and drive in a screw to hold the fence in this new position. Now you can run through the five cut method again and rerun the calculation to see what kind of error you're left with. All right, so just after one adjustment, I got down to 0 0.001, which is one thousandth of an inch. And that is about as good as it gets. There's no need to go any further from there. In fact, if you can get anything 0, 0 0.00 something, you're good enough. There's no need to chase it any further than that. You're gonna have a very, very accurate sled. Now with all of the adjustments over, I can flip the sled over and drill some more pilot holes to attach more screws to make sure this fence doesn't go anywhere. Now, as you can see here, when you're using this sled, the blade can come out the back here. And if you're not careful, you could end up hitting your fingers. So I'm gonna make a safety block to go on the back of the sled just to make sure that I keep my hands out of this area and I don't get hurt.
All right, so the next thing we need for our sled is a good stop block. Now, I decided to go with the Jonathan Katz Moses stop block. I just haven't found anything out there that works as good as this stop block does. Okay, yeah, I know. You could just use a block of wood and a clamp and it makes a great stop block, but come on. I mean, look at the red. That, that's just beautiful. All right, but seriously, either one of these options could work really good for you on this type of sled. So really, for me, this is the perfect table saw crosscut sled. It has everything that I need and nothing that I don't, and it's not overly complicated by trying to do too much. So let me know if there's other features that you'd like to incorporate in your crosscut sled. Then go check this video out over here to where I show you how to make the perfect table saw push stick, or you can go check out another video you might like right over here. Thanks for watching.